both freedom and the outdoors have been something really very special to me since I was a young girl. And nature does really teach wonderful lessons. And I learned a huge lesson about freedom from one tiny bird. Many years ago, I was a teacher naturalist at a local Audubon Center in Connecticut. And in the fall of the year when the birds would start migrating south for their winter south, we would put nets up in the meadow. And they looked a lot like badminton nets, but they were of a much finer netting. So as the birds foraged for food for their long journey south, unaware of these nets, they would fly into them. We would take them in the palm of our hand and untangle their little feet and put a band on one of those teeny tiny feet. And that would later identify them for future study. Once they were banded, we had opened the palm of our hand. They just would lay there. There was no effort to be free, no flapping of wings until we would give them a lift and upward they would soar. Well, this got me thinking, how often am I, are we like that tiny bird that we feel trapped by such things perhaps as an illness or a financial difficulty, an addiction, or a relationship problem, or, or even by the news itself? So for the next 50 minutes or so, I'll be sharing ideas that have lifted me up and freed me and, and others. Actually, not just lifted me up and, and other individuals that I'm going to, to talk about, but healed me. So I'm going to share some healings, not only of myself, but of others. The first healing that you'll hear about is of my best friend's son, who had a serious lung condition, and he was not going in the right direction. The second thing that I'm going to share was a reconciliation with our teenage daughter. And I spend a lot of time on this because of where we are today. Just seems like the great divide at times. And then I'll finish this talk with sharing a healing of this same daughter while we were living in Brazil. In exploring these ideas that, that bring healing, I'll be sharing and talking about two books. Holy Bible. Could I get a smaller copy? <laughs> <laughs> I travel. And also, I wanted to show you just the various sizes that the Bible and Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy are available in. I will talk more about Mary Baker Eddy later in this talk, but sufficient to know right now that she too was faced with challenges as we are, challenges of invalidism, huge personal loss, a son taken away, various family members dying, and, and also just being isolated, just sort of put away in New England as a, as a woman in the late 1800s. And as I said, I'll talk more about Eddie later. You know, in Jesus' day, face problems just like we're facing today illness, poverty, social injustice, huge political and religious schisms. There was also climate, extreme climate. That's why so often you hear throughout the scriptures about famine. And also, and it's something we're so unaware of, the rumors of war. And I've done some research. You know, we, we think it was a peaceful time, but it was not. And yet Jesus had the answer to all these problems, 
2,000 years ago when he said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now this truth that, that Jesus was demonstrating and teaching was not a truth just for himself or a small group that was following him at that time. And it wasn't about place or doctrine. It was a universal truth that could be applied by all mankind. And it broke through the barriers of, of race, class, and gender then. And it still is doing that today. So what is this truth that will make us free? Well, fundamental to it, Jesus said, God is our Father. And he further said, call no man on earth your Father, for one which is in heaven is your Father. Now, in the simplicity of this little phrase, there's a bold truth, that little word, one. One is our Father. Now, Jesus calling God Father was because of his and our close relationship to God. The Bible also refers to God as mother, as in the book of Isaiah. As a mother comforts her young, so will I comfort you. So this one divine parent is truth itself, love itself. And as the scriptures say, all things were made by God, and without God was nothing made that was made. And then in the early or scriptures, God saw everything, everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. So God being the only one couldn't make anything outside of God's oneness, God's allness, all must be God-like. And that would have to be good. We also learn in the scriptures that God is spirit. So everything good and real must be purely spiritual. So we, us, as God's children, his sons and daughters, are the very outcome of God. That is, the substance of our life is truth and love, and that is God. So every attribute of God's is ours, right here, right now. Now, this isn't some feel-good religious statement. It can be lived and, and demonstrated. What is required is just a shift of perspective. And this change of perspective causes us to think and act differently. And it brings healing today in 2023, just as it did 2,000 years ago. These times just remind me of a healing that, and a conversation that I had with my best friend at the onset of COVID. There was so much out there. I mean, there's always so much out there in the news about whatever. And there were lots of opinions, and so I thought, I would like my best friend's take on this as a nurse. She's right there on the front lines. And so she talked about various things. And as we talked, she reminded me of a healing of her son of a serious lung disease. And as I said, he was not going in the right direction. I had known about the, the healing. I was 
part of the healing, but I had never heard what was going on at her end of the, the phone. And so as I listened, I asked her, I said, would you mind writing that up so I could share this in a Christian science lecture? And she most happily did, and I smile in that she titled it, and she titled it The Spectacular 17-Minute Healing. So I'm going to read that to you. Before reading it to you, let me say something that she and I had been best friends for over 20 years. Whatever doubts she had about Christian science and its reliability for healthcare for children had totally vanished in that she saw how responsibly we parented and how quickly things were healed through Christian science, whether it was an illness or a school difficulty. I'll continue with this in a minute. Let me first read her account. One Sunday afternoon, my son, who was 15 at that time, and I were watching sports on TV. Suddenly he said, Mom, I'm having trouble taking a deep breath. I looked over at him and asked a few clinical questions. I'm a nurse with lots of experience, and my son can worry a bit, and I've learned to reassure him. So I told him, probably wasn't anything to worry about, and then jokingly I added, let me know when it's time to go to the emergency room. We continued to watch the game, and after a while, he turned to me and said, I think I need to see a doctor. In a short time, we were in the hospital getting chest x-rays and getting him admitted for what was diagnosed as a sudden onset of bilateral pneumonia. I was scared because he was receiving multiple drugs for a very serious lung disease. All the interventions were appropriate, and I had faith in the medical plan. I stayed with him in the hospital for three days while his condition deteriorated. He was very sick. On Wednesday, on Wednesday morning, I called Patty at 7 a.m. for the comfort of my best friend. Patty listened for a short time and said to me, let me get to work, and we hung up. 17 minutes later, after a particularly tough night with respiratory staff on call for, for treatments, whenever my son asked for help, my son sat up, took off his oxygen mask, and said, Mom, I think I don't need th this anymore. Everyone was surprised. I wasn't. I knew where the healing had come from. Such a drastic change in evidence doesn't occur within 17 minutes. Something else was going on. My prayer, my friend's prayer, as a Christian science practitioner, brought the healing. Let me add here, she must have said three or four times, we hard-nosed, tough-minded medical people know that a change in condition doesn't happen in 17 minutes. That something else was going on. Before I dive into what the something else, wa else was, let me continue saying that she, through years of our friendship, realized that Christian science prayer is, is reliable for children. I'd also like to add, here is a woman grieving. It's an emergency. So what does one do, or what <clears throat> would I do in an emergency, but pray? One other thing is, you might be wondering, well, why did I say let me get to work, instead of saying, <clears throat> let me just pray about this? Well, I wanted <clears throat> both of us to realize that I took this seriously and would stay with it as long as possible. So let's go to what happened once I hung up. Excuse me a minute.
Once I got off the phone, I got very quiet. And I declared that God, divine love, knows no boundaries, doesn't stop at a hospital door. I also realized I had to get out of that room an uninvited guest, fear. How often do we read throughout the scriptures that God says, fear not, Jesus himself, fear not, I am with you. So I realized that Christian science prayer is based on the same law that Jesus healed by and that this law is reliable. This law that Jesus saw, he saw that it is intact, that it couldn't be broken into or or changed, that man is held within this law. So realizing that this law is reliable, I also saw that prayer is not changing God, it's changing us. We see the somethingness, the nowness, and feel that somethingness and nowness of divine love. So prayer isn't about mustering up enough faith. What it is, it's yielding to the law that is. I've also learned that God will give us the ideas we need in just the way that we will understand it. You know, I don't know very much about aerodynamics. This just says again about law. And yet I get in an airplane and I know that it's going to lift me to my final destination. And so it is with the law of love that as I said, it is reliable and that we can follow it and that God will give us the ideas we need. So as I listened for God's direction, I heard these words. In him, God, we live and move and breathe. Now, I can see some of you who know Paul's statement already auto-correcting, saying, That's not what Paul said. Paul said, in God, we live and move and have our being. Well, I just said that God will give you the ideas that you need. I needed to understand that this young man was actually breathing the atmosphere of love. And as I continued to follow this idea that became more and more expansive, you heard what happened. My friend called back and her son was completely healed. This was really good news for her and for me. And the good news that Jesus was talking about It was the gospel, the good news that God is right here within us, at hand. And yet, all that people were seeing, all the healings, they still kept saying, well, when is the kingdom of heaven going to come? And Jesus' response was, it's not about low there or low here. It's at hand. It is within. So this kingdom of heaven is still right here. This Christ truth. Healing in Christian science isn't taking a bad situation and turning it into a good situation or a bad person into a good person. What healing is doing is showing us what is already present. This change of perspective shows us what is present. Man, in all of our goodness and harmony and and beauty, 
It's like those photos that come back from a space telescope. You know, I don't know about when you all went to school, but when I studied astronomy, everything was black and white. I thought the universe was black and white. But Hubble changed our perception. It sent back photos in spectacular color. We could almost feel the, the motion of these stars and galaxies, which were always there. It just took a powerful lens to show us all that. And so it is for us that this change of perspective will show us in all of our beauty and, and harmony and motion. And prayer can often act as a lens showing us this spectacular universe of God. And prayer comes in all kinds of, all kinds of forms. There's no right way of praying, but it always helps us focus in on what God is doing. You may recall me saying, God gives us just the ideas we need in a way that we will understand them. Well, these new, fresh ideas that come to us about God and ourselves are known as the Christ. It's God in, in action. And Jesus was given the title of Christ Jesus because of how uniquely he lived his oneness with God. He also repeatedly told those of that time, it's not about person, it's about God. It's what God is doing, it is God with us whatever the situation may be. So this Christ truth is still lifting us up and freeing us, freeing us from fear and doubt and temptation. And I think this is what Jesus was asking us to share, this, this good news. You know, before the disciples were known as Christians, they were known as followers of the way. And their reward, so to speak, for following was what I had said earlier. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So this truth that was revealing itself in healing for the disciples was just too compelling not to follow. I particularly like the book of Mark, and it's not because it's the shortest of the Gospels. It's okay, you can, you can let it out. It's okay to laugh at a Christian science lecture. That Mark doesn't wait until chapter maybe four or five or six till the idea of healing is developed. Right there in chapter one, Mark talks about healing, Jesus' healing. So there's healing, teaching, healing, teaching. And it's almost like he's leaning into us and saying, right now are we the sons and daughters of God, and right now is the kingdom of heaven present. There was an urgency by these early followers to stay close to Jesus. This bold truth, it, it changed their lives. They, they became new men and new women. Wouldn't we want to do the same? Get on board, so to speak? Well, this bold truth, Jesus told us couldn't it couldn't be realized with the same old thinking. That is, just staying on the surface of things or staying with our own preconceived notions and concepts. It required something of us. 
and Jesus told us what it is. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Well, that can be a pretty scary thought for some. I know it was for me until I learned the real meaning of it in Christian science. So it's not a scary word. Really, it's a very tender word. It's as if Jesus is taking us by the hand and saying, you have thought way too long within the problem. And it won't get you anywhere. Go deeper. Look, I'm showing you your oneness with your divine parent. And you are just as perfect as your parent. God is perfect. Albert Einstein, the father of modern day physics, is purported to have said something quite similar. You can't solve your problems with the same thinking that created them. There's an idea that I've found helpful when thinking of the word repent. And it's an Italian word, and it's an art term, repentimento. Repentimento means getting down to the original, to the original masterpiece. You know, in the days of those great fresco painters, there were times that they would paint over or touch up something in their masterpiece. It might be that they had a fresh perspective on it. At other times, it was just time to redecorate that cathedral and it got painted over. In the time of Nazi Germany, people painted over their masterpieces in order to hide them. So pentimento means getting down to the original masterpiece. And the, the masterpiece that we're talking about today is God and God's creation. Have you ever thought of yourselves as a masterpiece? Because you are. What gets in the way of us experiencing and seeing more of this masterpiece that is us? It gets clouded over by such things as doubt and fear and ignorance. But if we want to get anywhere, if we want to see this masterpiece, then we really do need to do what Jesus did. And he went beneath the surface and found the spiritual cause. That's what happened with, with my friend's son and how the healing occurred. So every attribute of our health expressed in vitality and spontaneity and, and purpose and harmony and intelligence is right here, right now to be experienced. And so is our God-given goodness of character. I had a pentimento experience when our daughter was a teen. And this can be a pretty challenging time for all. And those of you in the audience who may have experienced this, know it. And looking back on this experience, it was really me that had some growing up to do. Our daughter had done something that had caused me great disappointment. To save you asking later what it is, because I had a 20-something come up to me and say, well, what did she do? Okay, what she did was she lied to me. And in our house, and to me, lying was just huge. And the more I thought about this lie, the angrier I became. She had apologized every which way to me about it, and yet I could not accept her apology. And as I said, the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. 
It was as if I was standing at a copy machine. And there was the button that I kept hitting. You know the one? Copy. What would come out but that same image? And with years of now hindsight and my own honesty, there was another button that I was hitting in large. But I had learned from experience, even though I was resistant, if I would just stay with it, continue praying that this mental looping that I was experiencing, there'd be a breakthrough and I would have peace again. Several days later, I am still, I'm still copying, I'm still enlarging, but very spontaneously, deep from within, came this shout. And because I'm so miked, I can't do it the way it came out. No, no, no. She is the image and likeness of God. With that, a whole new view, a whole new sense of God opened up and a new view of our daughter. Remember me saying that I needed to repent? Well, that's what happened. I saw in that moment that indeed our daughter was purely spiritual, the image and likeness of God, and in that totally good and honest. I could hardly wait to get home and throw my arms around our daughter. And interestingly enough, she, as I'm throwing open the front door, she was running towards me with a bit of good news of her own. Let me add here, what was so disturbing about this is I was done, done with our daughter. I had not spoken to her in days, and I was just building this wall between us higher and higher, and I had no intention of breaking it down. But in those moments, it just came down. We had a whole new relationship, a relationship that was based on truth and love. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say to you, we never had another mother-daughter disagreement. But it was based on something new. We could talk about things. It was based on truth and love. So what were the words that came to me so spontaneously? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, male and female. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. In those moments, I saw reality, what is known even today and referred to as the kingdom of heaven. No longer were those three words something that I just slurred over or thought that it was too bland, ethereal. I had experienced the kingdom of heaven. And we can all experience more of this harmony, this reality. What gets in the way of us experiencing more of it is this material self that, that we think we've created through our choices, our successes, and our failures, or our preconceived concepts. But this is not what's true about any of us. When I find myself about to begin that mental looping, there's something that I find a passage in the, in the scriptures, in Psalms, that I find enormously helpful. It's this. It is God that has made us and not we ourselves. 
for me, it's a, I don't want to fall off this platform. It's a, whoa, Patty, stop. This isn't about you. It's about God. See out, think out from what God is doing. So back to what happened. Was it just quoting scripture or shouting no as loud as I could three times? What it was, was truth, God, revealing God, the truth of everyone. And what happened next was just one of those almost fall down on your knees experiences that not only did I see our daughter this way, but truth, and that's how truth works, it began to multiply itself. I began to see this friend of hers, that friend of hers, this friend of mine, that relative, all, all within this law of love, that each was pure and perfect, truthful, never outside of this law. Everyone held in this law. What I also realized that moment is that I had accepted our daughter as a teenager, and then I was busily checking those boxes of vul vulnerability, selfish, uh, and here I just, the list would go on, and here I just added untrustworthy. There are boxes for whatever age or stage of life we're in. And then there's also the boxes that we carry along with us, such as incurable, unforgivable, addict, alone. But there's really only one fact box to check. So are you all ready with your mental marking pens? Let's do it. Spirit made. This is our real identity. And it's anything but bland and colorless. It, it gives us new purpose. And it breaks through all those boxes of sex and gender and class. And as happy as I am, and as grateful as I was for this healing, this reconciliation with our daughter, what I'm most grateful for is what I saw that day that continues to help others, that none of us are defined by our past, popular opinions, or solace statistics. One thing defines us and that is God. So the same truth that I saw and applied to this situation with our daughter is the same truth we can apply to whatever this situation is, whether it's someone at work, at the office, a community problem, government problem, or the world. As we find our own spiritual identity, we can shine the same light of, of truth. And as we do this, we will find more unity, more love. And in that light, we will find solutions to whatever the problem is, no matter how large or for how long it's been. You may recall me saying that for the disciples, what they were seeing and learning was just too compelling for them not to follow. Well, so it was for me as a teenager after I walked into a Christian Science Sunday School. What I was learning and reading in Science and Health just was too compelling not to follow, not to continue. And as Greg mentioned, shortly thereafter, through my own simple prayer, 
I had a healing of a broken arm. And to just answer the question, well, how did you know it was broken? Maybe, you know, just a bad bruise. Well, that mother who was a medical nurse, when I told her that I had had a healing, I was in a doctor's office in 15 minutes, and he verified, yes, indeed, it had broken, and it has healed perfectly. So for me, in all that I was witnessing myself, a grandfather that had been an alcoholic for 40 years and nothing else worked, but once he came to Christian science, he was healed. That mother who was not exactly in the beginning a follower, um, did become a student of Christian science and had many wonderful healings. And I think what one of the things that I'm most grateful for is witnessing the change in men and women who have been incarcerated for so many years and have moved on from a, a very dark state to being new men and women. And it's it's noticeable. It's noticeable to wardens. It's noticeable to their cellies. And yes, some of these individuals have been released. And what a thrill it is to sit next to one of these individuals who had been incarcerated for years and years, and that they're now good citizens and members of a Christian Science Church. Let's pause a minute from today, okay, to 1866. Mary Baker Eddy is now in her mid-40s. Now, that is already beyond the average life expectancy of a woman at that time. She had also had a serious fall. I know I'm, I'm looking at someone with the sun in your eyes, okay. She, Eddie had also had a serious fall that no one expected her to recover from. But for Eddie, it was never too late to turn to God. Since girlhood, she had been looking for an understanding of God that would relieve, in her own words, human woe. So in that hour of need, she asked for her Bible and she opened it to one of Jesus' healings. In reading it, she caught a glimpse of how Jesus healed, that this underlying reality that we're talking about, this reality that is life itself, God. This led to her quick recovery. And after that, she spent another three years studying the scriptures so that she could understand how it healed so she could help others. And what she discovered is that divine love is governing and guiding the universe. As I said, what she was about, let me read in her own words, the lame, the deaf, the dumb, the blind, the sick, the sensual, the sinner. I wish to save from the slavery of their own beliefs and from the educational systems of the pharaohs who today, as of yore, hold the children of Israel in bondage. You may be wondering, what's she talking about, the educational systems of the pharaohs? Well, she's referring to the years that the children of Israel, the Jews, were held in captivity. But she's also speaking to us about the things that would hold us captive. And just as the children of Israel were led by Moses to freedom, that we too can be led to our God-given freedom. This is what motivated Eddie for the next 40 years. And she dedicates the pages of Science and Health in the, pre in the preface 
to honest seekers for truth. I'm often asked, but why did she name it Christian Science? Well, the Christian part is pretty easy, that we are serious followers of Christ Jesus who taught us how to live the love that is God. I think that word science is trickier because we have that tendency to bring our own preconceived concepts of what it means to the word. In doing some research for this talk and, and really wanting a definition of science that, that I could take hold of, I found this one online. The purpose, the general purpose of science is to show a useful model of reality. Let me repeat that. The general purpose of science is to show a useful model of reality. This is exactly what Jesus was doing. He showed us the model, reality, infinite spirit, love, that is big enough to heal what, whatever the problem is, anywhere, anytime. I didn't always know this sort of anywhere until we moved to Brazil. Before this big move, we had a, our family of four, had all the required mandated vaccines, and we also listened to about food handling because we would be buying all of our fruit and produce and and chicken and fish from open air markets. And let's remember, it's a tropical climate. Shortly after our arrival, our daughter woke up in the middle of the night with intense intestinal pain. I got up and I took her in my arms and reminded her how much God loved her loves her, and I began to sing her hymns. She fell asleep quickly and peacefully, and so I put her back to bed. And before I returned to bed, I prayed, as I've been sharing with you today. The next morning, she bounded out of bed, happy, and off to school she went. Well, the next night, the same thing happened and it happened for another night. I decided on that third night that I would not return to bed until I saw what it was that I needed to see about our young daughter. So I went to the dining room table with my Bible and science and health and opened it up. Again, knowing that God would give me the idea that I needed. Until that night, I had thought of the Woodard family of four with two young children as Americans holding, South America are also Americans, but I saw myself and our family as holders of, U of U.S. passport who had just left what I thought was a safe country as far as crime went and as far as illness went, to one that I didn't think was so safe about either of those. But again, it's never too late to turn to God. And as I sat there with expecting to hear what I needed to hear, one word came, infinite. In that moment when I heard that word infinite, I understood, I saw that God is infinite, the only power, the only one, and that everything is the expression of this infinite one God good. That our daughter was actually the expression 
of this good, living in this good that is God. All fear quickly left. I could see very clearly that there was no coming and going from spirit. And I went to bed. The next morning, she bounded out of bed, went off to school, and that was the end of the problem. Days later, although, although I had not had it medically diagnosed, days later, while reading a Brazilian weekly news magazine, as I was reading it, I was like, oh, I was reading about a disease that is especially contagious in the summer months for young children. And my peers had said, yep, we've had it. So have our children. And it takes six weeks under medication to be healed by it. Well, for the Woodard family, not only was it good news about this healing, but we suddenly found ourselves at home. We no longer felt like strangers in a foreign land. And because of that, we didn't have to go through many of the problems that an expatriate does. So this good news that the kingdom of heaven, reality, is right here, right now, to be lived, was what we were celebrating. And it was this good news that Jesus was teaching and preaching and verified. And we can experience, as I said early, earlier, more of this in science. And through this lens, we will see this universe of God right here, right now. It's not like it's some far off, soon to be discovered galaxy. It's the only universe right here and right now that we are all living this truth together harmoniously. And anyone through Christian science and the ideas, the truths in science and health can heal. Before closing, let me just say a couple things that anyone here who would like a copy of Science and Health or other Christian science literature, the members of this church would be happy to provide you with free literature. And for those of you online um, viewing this, um, there's information on the website, Prayer That Heals, that where you could get a copy from a church nearby. And if you're far away, you'll still be able to get information about Christian science. In closing, let me read one of my favorite passages from Science and Health. Christian science raises the standard of liberty and cries, follow me. Escape from the bondage of sickness, sin, and death. Jesus marked out the way. Citizens of the world, accept the glorious liberty of the children of God and be free. This is your divine right. Thank you.